Good evening, you're watching News Mongolian Build. I'm your host, Andrew Khambatar. And for our top stories, project on introducing hydroponic greenhouse technology was launched. Human remains were found in Asian Bay Era Tomb. Ambassador Extraordinary Plenipotentiary of the Commonwealth of Australia to Mongolia presents her credentials. And for the news, stay tuned. According to the World Health Organization, an adult with normal weight should at least 100 grams of green leafy vegetables on a daily basis. The latest study shows that Mongolians' intake of leafy greens is barely reaching 80 grams a day. In order to increase that consumption and also to substitute foreign imports, a project on establishing hydroponic greenhouses was launched. The project team plans to introduce the latest greenhouse technologies and solutions from the South Korean company Plenty Farm, leader in production of hydroponic greenhouses. For the last couple of years, the company Premium Group has conducted technical and financial assessment for introducing vertical hydroponic greenhouses to Mongolia. And the project was finally launched this Monday. On average, around 800 tons of green leafy vegetables can be grown in the hydroponic greenhouses. In a hydroponic greenhouse, gravel is commonly used as the growing medium that gives support to the plant's roots. In a greenhouse, growing system plants are supplied with mixed nutrients that then are fed to plants in liquid forms at periodic intervals and this method of growing is called subirrigation culture. LED lights run for 48 hours, reducing the harvest time by half. Growing vegetables high in nutrients and without using any harmful chemicals, pesticides, and being able to provide consumers with fresh and healthy greens regularly is one of the major steps towards economic development. With the introduction of the hydroponic greenhouse technology, it will become possible to harvest fresh vegetables in any season of the year. This is quite a hard producing and intensive technology that can provide annual yield as much as 60 times higher than the traditional agricultural technology does. Even though Mongolia is covering half of domestic demand for vegetables and greens, 40% of local demand is covered by the imported goods. Therefore, the company representatives and the project initiators say that the initiative will have a long-term positive impact on the local economy and overall health such as increased consumption of leafy greens. Now let's take a look at our next story. In 2018, a research team led by Dr. Yitrhanga discovered 19 monuments at the foot of the Kavu mountain located in Hongersum of Darkhold province. On June 22nd, while a Shambay era tomb was also discovered in this area. The tomb, shaped like a Mongolian girl, was discovered. Recently, the expedition group recovered the remains and human skull from the tomb. Currently, the local authorities are assisting them by cordoning off the area. In we have noticed that the tomb had already been raided and then was restored. For example, a previous tomb that we discovered last year had all the doors and entrances intact, while the back part was destroyed and then restored. It seems like there was such a practice. The main tomb had two human skeletons buried under the remains. In addition, two human skulls were found apparently from people that were sacrificed during some ritual. In other words, it had remains of four to five people. In the small tomb, we found vases and pots mainly from the Shomu period, and some had Shambay era characteristics. Then we found a carved wooden grave in Lena containing an entire human skeleton. Interestingly, due to the quality of the soil, the remains were very well preserved, so that even the brain in the skull was preserved. Mm -hmm. The archaeological team plans to continue their studies next year as there are 11 more tombs and sacrificial sites that have not been studied yet. Therefore, the team has requested that the local authorities provide protection assistance during the upcoming long holiday period. The local authority will conduct an audit of the historical remains preserved in the region. The team will continue their studies and excavation work next summer. In the future, both sides expect that the location of the historical remains will become an historical sightseeing area that will attract visitors and thereby develop the local tourism sector. Now let's take a look at Mongolia's current affairs. The ambassador of the Commonwealth of Australia to Mongolia, Katie Smith,
presented her credentials to the President of Mongolia, Urusuk Okhna. The President of Mongolia congratulated the ambassador on her appointment and wished her success. He also noted that this year marks the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries, and noted the importance of expanding relations and cooperation in trade, economy, mining, agriculture, and education sectors. Ambassador Katie Smith expressed her commitment to expanding the Mongolian-Australian extended partnership in all areas, increasing the number of Mongolian students receiving scholarships from the Australian government, and strengthening people-to-people -people contacts. The Memorandum of Understanding between the Government of Mongolia and the Government of the Commonwealth of Australia on Work and Holiday Visa Agreements will come into force on 1st of July of this year. The sides have agreed that up to 100 young people from Mongolia and Australia will have the opportunity to work, study and travel for up to a year, which will make an important contribution to increasing people-to-people -people exchanges. An Ulaanbaatar Beijing direct flight will be scheduled for July 4. In this regard, the Chinese Ministry of Transport have made a number of demands. For example, Passengers flying from Ulaanbaatar to China must be isolated for five days before flying from Mongolia. Citizens were then reminded to be isolated for 14 days in the city to which they flew. Airlines are required to obtain a dual permit from the destination. For example, passengers flying from Ulaanbaatar to Beijing will be served by Air China from Beijing to Ulaanbaatar and from Ulaanbaatar to Hukot. Passengers must also be isolated in Hukot for 14 days. From there, citizens will be allowed to travel to Beijing. China has demanded a 75% full flight from Ulaanbaatar. Miat will operate the Ulaanbaatar Guangzhou route, while Air Mongolia plans to operate the Ulaanbaatar Hukot route. So far, no flight permit has been received from Hukot Airport. The passengers will pay the cost of 14 days of isolation. In the future, if the state of the COVID-19 improves, the number of flights to China may increase. If COVID-19 cases are registered from more than five passengers, the flight will be cancelled. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongo Bank. Here's the weather forecast of world's major cities. Well, that's all for today and thank you for staying with us. We will see you tomorrow with the news and updates. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.